too long. And welcome back to Code Searcher. All right, guys. Uh, f first off, I get a lot of requests in here, especially lately, about the Ark of the Covenant, for one. Um, different things that people want me to look for in the codes. And uh, this is a hot topic here uh, uh, lately, among other things. But uh, this one has recently, uh, you know, come back into my hands. I've been looking at a table. Well, looking at a few of them, to tell you the truth, but one in particular for about two weeks, and uh, I think I'm going to get that one out tonight, guys, but I want to read you this. The question, what happened to the Ark of the Covenant? And so this is what it says here on God Questions. The answer, what happened to the Ark of the Covenant is a question that has fascinated the theologians, Bible students, and archaeologists for centuries. In the 18th year of his reign, King Josiah of Judah ordered the caretakers of the Ark of the Covenant to return to the temple in Jerusalem. 2 Chronicles 35, 1-6 and 2 Kings 23, 21-23. That is the last time the Ark's location is mentioned in the scriptures. Forty years later, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon captured Jerusalem and raided the temple. Less than ten years after that, he returned and took what was left in the temple and then burnt it and the city to the ground. Uh, so what happened to the ark? Was it taken by Nebuchadnezzar, or was it destroyed in the city? Or was it removed and hidden safely away, as evidently happened when Pharaoh Shishak of Egypt raided the temple during the reign of Solomon's son Rehoboam? Evidently, because of Shishak had managed to take the ark, why did Josiah ask the Levites to return it? If the ark was in Egypt, was in, was in Egypt uh, a la the plot line of the Raiders of the Lost Ark, the Levites would have not, uh, excuse me, the Levites would have possessed it and therefore would, could not have returned it. Interesting. Uh, interestingly, Revelation 11:19 mentions the ark as being in heaven. Uh, and just on this note, folks, because I didn't write this, um, there's also a, um, a temple in heaven. So there is a representation of that on the earth. So what we're talking about here when it says Revelation, it's talking about the ark that is in heaven. There's also a temple that is in heaven and a throne room and, and a holy of holies, all that kind of stuff. Um, Yeshua, as the high priest, had to, you know, uh, sprinkle on the mercy seat. Uh, you're going to see later in this um, presentation that there is an archaeologist that suggests that Yeshua did this during the crucifixion. In other words, that uh, the blood actually ran down the cross and into the ground and onto the mercy seat of what is, or possibly, uh, potentially, the ark that is on the earth. The You know, you know Yeshua gave instructions on to build this box. That would house the tablets and Aaron's rod and some manna and things like that. Um, it was based on a pattern already that existed in heaven. Um, the same thing with the temple and the tabernacle. It was all based on a pattern that you already had. So uh, I just needed to say that on here because it mentions the ark as if it's the same ark. And it's not. Um this is what the one that is in heaven. There is what is it, what is above is also below. In other words, uh, then God's temple in heaven was open, and within His temple was seen the ark of His covenant. And there came flashes of lightning and rumbles and pearls of thunder and earthquakes and severe hailstorm. And the verse has led some to speculate that the ark was taken up to heaven and preserved there. And I don't believe that that is the case. Uh, I believe the story. It comes uh, like you just heard uh, above the story of Nebuchadnezzar coming in, um, in and there's uh, a recollection in the book of Maccabees. And I do believe Maccabees, by the way, is a valid um, account. Uh, the Jewish people were notorious about keeping records. Uh, even to this day, they're, you know, spot on record keepers. So uh, it is safe to surmise that. Uh, th that the records kept in Maccabees is probably accurate, seeing that it is still cited 
by Jews all around the world. Uh, I realize it is not a part of the Bible, but there was a point where it was a part of the Apocrypha, folks. And these books, some of these books were found in Qumran. So uh, the Jews of the day obviously felt that they were valid to read. So uh, I just wanted to say that before I cite from it. I have a sefer here that I'm going to cite from a section of Maccabees where it talks about Jeremiah and what happens with him and the ark. Uh, and it seems to back up or validate a theory that was about this, uh, the archaeologist I was talking about, Ron Wyatt, who said he has uh, found, or had found, he's deceased now, excuse me, uh, the Ark of the Covenant. So uh, that, that's where I'm leading here in this search. Um, it goes on to say, uh, but the ark that John sees in the vision of heaven is probably not the same ark that Moses constructed. And I just said that. We know that the articles in the in the tabernacle were copies of the heavenly things, and that the sanctuary itself, but a copy of the shadow of what was in heaven. Hebrews 8, 5, and Revelation 11 details the sounding of the seventh trumpet, which ushers in a final round of judgment upon the earth. John's glimpse of the ark is probably meant to as a reminder that Yahuwah has not forgotten his people, and that's true. Uh, but not exactly. I don't believe this. This is the ark. Where this is this is the heavenly ark. Uh, there's another one that's a representation of that one that uh, will be presented, and I believe it will be uh, a witness against the Jewish people. Um, my friend Bozong uh, mentioned this to me before in looking at the table that we're going to look at. That uh, there's a theory that Elijah will confront the Jews with the tablets. That are in the ark and the end of days and so uh, uh that is yet to be seen so it was, it was a very uh compelling uh thought uh what if that is true so uh, I, I went down that path to check it out so i'm going to be sharing that with you here in just a few minutes but uh anyway i wanted to cover a, a couple of things here that i got outlined like it's fixing to say here the non-canonical -can book of second Mac maccabees reports just prior to the Babylon invasion, Jeremiah, finally, I just told you this, and I don't mean to be re redundant, folks, but uh, <laughs> that's just the way I am sometimes. So here we go. Uh, following a divine revelation, ordered that the tabernacle and the ark should accompany him, and he went off uh, to the mountain where Moses climbed to seek Yahuwah's inheritance. And this is suggested to be Mount Nebo uh, from Deuteronomy 31, 1 through 4. When Jeremiah uh, arrived there, he found a room in a cave where he put the tent, the ark, and the altar of incense, and uh, he blocked up the entrance, uh, Verse, uh, chapter 2, verse 4 and 5. However, some of those who followed him came up intending to mark the path, but they could not find it. And when Jeremiah heard of this, he reproved them uh, and said, This place is to remain unknown until Yahuwah gathers his people together again and shows mercy uh, to them. Uh, then, then Yahuwah will disclose these things, and the glory of Yahuwah will be seen in the clouds, just as he appeared in the time of Moses when Solomon prayed that the temple might be gloriously sanctified. And uh, Interesting, folks, we're coming up, and by the way, Maccabees has a strong connection to Hanukkah, uh, the season that we're coming in, and uh, this, I don't know, maybe that's why this was on my mind, but uh, you're going to see it plays a part here. Uh, the word Hanukkah means literally in Hebrew, the dedication, uh, is the dedication of the temple, and we'll see in some of these uh, verses that we're going to be looking at uh, the table, uh, the word from Golgotha is the access term, is in a concentration of scriptures that speak exclusively of the Ark of the Covenant, uh, the Ark of Yahuwah, uh, the temple, construction, the ornaments and, and utensils thereof. It's all there. And I find it fascinating that from Golgotha is where it's encoded. Um, so it seems to, uh, again, lead a little more to the story of Ron Wyatt. Um, as ridiculous as that may seem some, Folks seem to believe that God is not capable 
uh, let's just remind ourselves we're talking about the same the same creator who appeared to over 11 million people as a column of flame and as a cloud uh, he also split the Red Sea folks he is not bound uh, by any one miracle if someone suggests that it is possible that the blood of Yahuwah, Yahushua, flow down the cross and into some crack and into uh, a cave where the ark was, uh, that I would say that is very plausible. It is ex certainly worth, ch you know, chasing down in the code. So uh, that's, that's kind of what we're doing here. So uh, I just wanted to share this with you and kind of set it up first. Again, 2 Maccabees is not a part of any uh, canon uh, of course, we're talking about the Catholic Church, and then, so it, I'm not bound by that. So I will read the, the Maccabees and take it into account as a an, an account. Um, and it does say, and let me just read here in Maccabees second chapter. And here's what it says: It is found also in the records that Jeremiah the prophet commanded them that were carried away to take the fire as it had been signified and how that the prophet had been given to them the Torah charged them not to forget the commandments of Yahuwah and that they should not err in their minds when they see images of silver and gold and their ornaments and with other such speeches extorted them and said that the Torah should not depart from their hearts it was also contained in the same writing that the prophet being warned of Elohim, commanded the tabernacle of the ark to go with him. And as he went forth into the mountain where Moshe climbed up and saw the heritage of Elohim, and when Jeremiah came thither, he found a hollow cave, wherein he laid the tabernacle and the ark and the altar of the incense, and so stopped the door. And some of those that followed him came to the mark the way, but they could not find it, which when Jeremiah perceived, he blamed them, saying, As for that place, it shall be unknown until that time that Elohim gather his people again together and receive them unto mercy. Then shall Yahuwah show them these things, and the glory of Yahuwah shall appear, and the cloud also, at, as it is shown under Moshe, and when Shalomah desired that the place might be honorably sanctified. And it was also declared that he being wise offered a sacrifice of dedication. Folks, dedication here. Uh, that's Hanukkah. And the finishing of the temple. So here we go. Incredible correlation here with Hanukkah that we're coming up to. Uh, the possibility of the ark being you know there's there's talk in Israel that they have the ark uh, there, there's talk in Israel they're going to build the temple the dedication is should not be too far away so here it is as I in verse 9 and also and it was also declared that being wise offered the sacrifice of dedication and of the finishing of the temple as when Moshe prayed unto Yahuwah the fire came down from heaven and consumed the sacrifices. Even prayed Shalomah also, and the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offerings. So, uh, is it a possibility that this could be um, a huge sign? Um, you know, my friend Bozog seems to think that El. Uh, <laughs> here's the thing, folks. Uh, I, I do believe they have the ark, okay? Uh, do I believe that that the blood came down from Yeshua down the cross and into a crack uh, that was open from the earthquake? And we know there was an earthquake. And onto the mercy seat. Yes, that is very plausible. Um, but am I saying the codes reflect that? Um, I cannot say that it shows without a doubt. But I find it fascinating that from Golgotha is there. But, uh, you know, some people will argue, well, Maccabees is not something I would quote from. Well, uh, I just did, and I'm, 
uh, apologize for stepping on your toes, but I think it's an uh, important account to verify um, what's going on with Jeremiah. And here's the, the table I am talking about, folks. It's uh, from Golgotha uh, is the access term. And look at, look at this. The altar is right here. You got one, two, uh, where is it? I thought it was more than this off the page here. You got another over here. Um, but three, again, three is the theme uh, of the blood here at the top here. Uh, Elijah, the, the very one who's good, who supposedly in the theory that Bozal has or, or, or told me of, will confront the Jews with the tablets that are on the inside. And here we go. Uh, you got Elijah right next to from Golgotha. And how's this? Look at this in the white. Uh, these five letters says um, it is found or is recovered right there. The altar. Uh, Zophan, which is the hidden. And you have the Goela, the Redeemer, the Goela. Uh, also, Mashiach here in the blue going the other direction. So a lot of things kind of converging on to one point and as, as, as this here in red, which is the atonement going there. And how's this in green, which is a mention of uh, Yeshua or Yahshua right here in the plain text, because this is uh, the book of Yahshua uh, that we're in. Um, I have these verses highlighted that I thought were significant that seem to mention the Ark of the Covenant. And you can see here, uh, Ark of the Covenant of, of Yahuwah. Uh, it's mentioned here. It's also uh, there as well. And I believe there's another spot off the page. And then down here where the uh, it is re revealed or is um, right here. Then the, excuse me. The five red and white letters. Yeah, it is uh, basically saying it's revealed and stopping on the, the verse mentioning <laughs> the Ark of Yahuwah. Uh, some other words, the crucifixion right here in black and red is also uh, crossing on itself with one of the letters and uh, stopping here. You can see those four letters that come together. All this is equal letter distance skip now. Uh, let's see, we have a, uh, a mercy seat in the yellow and red here. And, and bear with me, folks. This is a immense amount of things to uh, memorize in a short amount of time because I look at several tables at once. So we're, we're literally talking about hundreds and hundreds of, of verses and words. Uh, here we got Hanukkah. Both spellings of Hanukkah converging with the, the Kohanim or the priests. Uh, and here we have the, the Ark coming together. But here you go in the green, Hanukkah. And then in the bl uh, blue and the red, Hanukkah coming together. And uh, how's this? Uh, Ron Wyatt coming together with the hay in Hanukkah. which Or dedication, in other words. Uh, we got the, the Debar, Yahuwah. Or the word of Yahuwah, uh, grotto. It was found in a grotto, uh, apparently hidden in a grotto. I can't validate yet that it is absolutely found in a grotto, but it seems to show a presence of Ron Wyatt here uh, with this verse. We'll get into that to a minute. Uh, the Maccabees here in the purple. Uh, it is also, I'm sure, over on this side as well, Maccabees mentioning with the Ark of the Yahuwah Maccabee right there. And how's this? Um, the Word of Yahuwah, the Mashiach, and Passover coming together. And we, you say, well, what does that have to do anything? Well, this, you got in the yellow, the crucifixion and Passover um, coming together hand in hand. And this, that's what it says in white here. Hand in hand. I believe they do go hand in hand. Uh, with Look what's vertical here. Uh, you got Yeshua in the blue, written this way, and the Mashiach this way, sharing these two letters with the blood 
is sufficient. Their blood is sufficient. And you have a lamb here, vertical, and a lamb here, conjoining with the altar. So lamb and altar come together. Right where Mash Mashiach and Yeshua are coming together there. So uh, interesting, <coughs> excuse me, how that comes together. And I believe that is all the ELS terms that we have in here. Uh, yeah, so let's just uh, take a look at some of the scriptures that I have highlighted here. And of course, this is Devarim 4.28 is what we're going to read there and uh, starting at 28 and there ye shall serve gods the work of men's hands wood and stone which neither see nor hear nor eat nor smell but from thence thou shalt seek Yahuwah thy yellow heen and thou shalt find him, if thou shalt seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul, when thou art in tribulation, and that is specifying a time. Um, and how do you know that? Because it says, uh, for in the latter days, you will perceive. Uh, I'm trying to speed this up a little bit. Sorry for fumbling on this. Should be a little more prayer. When thou art in tribulation, and all these things that come upon these, even in the latter days, if thou turn unto the Lord thy God, thou shalt be obedient to his voice. For Yahuwah, thy Elohim, is a merciful Elohim, for he will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, neither forget the covenant of thy fathers, which he swore unto them. And uh, where it says the blood is sufficient, in Yahuwah, the Mashiach, um, that's a covenant mentioned in Jeremiah. It's really interesting. It's called the Brit Shah. Alright, so uh, this verse here is what I have highlighted next, which is Devarim 27 and 9. And here's what it says here. And Moses, the priest and the Levite, spake unto all Israel, saying, Take heed and hearken, O Israel. Thou, uh, this day, thou art become the people of uh, Yehudah thy Elohim. Thou shalt therefore obey his voice, uh, uh, excuse me, obey the voice of Yehudah thy Elohim, and do his commandments in all his statutes, which I have commanded thee this day. And Moses charged the people the same, the same day, saying, These shall stand upon Mount Gesserim to bless the people, uh, when you come over the Jordan, Simeon, Levi, Judah, and Ishkar, and Joseph, and Benjamin. And he shall stand upon Ebal to curse. So there was a gap in between, folks. This was Shechem, where they were doing this. Uh, this is something that uh, was required of them. But I want to back it up um, and just show you what was going on just a few verses back. And it says... And it shall be on the day when ye pass over the Jordan into the land which Yahuwah thy Elohim will give thee, that thou shalt set up thee great stones, and plaster them with plaster, and thou shalt write upon them all the words of this law. When thou art passed over, thou not goest, uh, go into the land which the Yahuwah thy Elohim giveth thee, the land that floweth with milk and honey, as Yahuwah Elohim of thy fathers has promised thee. Therefore it shall be when ye be gone over Jordan that ye shall set up these stones which I have commanded you this day in Mount Ebal and in the other mount as well. Um, but even still, he is setting up this because it's going to be a sign for them. Just like I'm getting to with the finding of the ark. Uh, I believe it's going to be a uh, as my friend Bozong says, a witness against um, the Jewish people for uh, what's contained inside of it uh, to bring them back. Let's go to this next verse here. And I apologize for the time. And we are in chapter 12 of... Hmm. 
Let's click the right one. This one. There we go. 31 is the chapter. We'll go back to And he gave Joshua, the son of Nun, a charge, and, it's, and he said, Be strong and of good courage, for thou shalt bring the children of Israel into the land which I swore to them, and, it shall, and I will be with thee. And it, shall, and it came to pass that when Moses had made an end of writing the words of this law in a book until they were finished, that Moses commanded the Levites, which bear the Ark of the Covenant, and here's the mention of it, and uh, also the Sefer Torah, the the book of the law, until they were finished, he bare the Ark of the Covenant of Yahuwah, saying, Take this book of the law and put it in the side of the Ark of the Covenant of Yahuwah, your Elohim, that it may be a witness against thee. How about that? That it may be a therefore a witness against thee. For I know thy rebellion and thy stiff neck. Behold, while I'm yet alive, with you this day ye have been rebellious against the Yahuwah. And how much more after my death, gather unto me all the elders of your tribes and your officers, that I may speak these words in their ears, and call heaven and earth to record against them. As you see, folks, they're taking record. For I know that after my death you will utterly corrupt yourselves, that's why they were meticulous uh, to, to record things, because people had a habit of corrupting themselves and forgetting Yahuwah. And turn aside from which way I have commanded you, and evil will befall you. And in the latter days, again, I'm mentioning of the specific time, in the latter days, because ye will do evil in the sight of Elohim, to provoke him to anger through the work of your hands. And so there you go, right there in the top of this. And then uh, just down, we have, this is Joshua being mentioned here. So I highlighted that, which is uh, chapter 11, verse 18. Here's what it says. And Joshua made war, Yeshua made war a long time with those kings. And who was at Baal? He was at, a, this is Yeshua. Uh, and a battle against Baal in the Valley of Lebanon. But on Golgotha, Yeshua made war a long time with those kings. And that was uh, where he conquered death, folks, Golgotha. And where we have mentioned several times of the Ark of the Covenant. The Covenant was there with him. Uh, and down here where it has Ron Wyatt intersecting is... Judges chapter 2 verse 1 is what I have highlighted and it's uh, mentioned here uh, it's actually a partial you can see just the end of that verse and it says I will never break my covenant with you and, you shall, and I'm going on to read here and you shall make no covenant with the inhabitants of this land and you shall break down their altars but you shall not hearken unto my voice what is this ye have done? Therefore, as I also said, I will not drive them out from before you, but they shall be unto you as snares, and their gods shall be a trap unto you. And uh, this is the idol worship that was going on. Same thing with the Catholic Church, folks. Uh, uh, the worship of Mary and the image of Christ on the cross, all this idol worship. Uh, of course, Christ has resurrected he is not on the cross any longer so to worship uh, an image of him suffering uh, is a little morbid um, when you think and here where uh, is revealed uh, the word I was struggling to remember formally in this video uh, intersecting with a mem here in a mention of and that is Samuel the first Samuel chapter 4 Around verse 5 is what I have highlighted there, so let's get that. And it's a mention of the Ark of the Covenant of Yahuwah when it came into the camp. Uh, and Israel shouted with a great shout. So, 
Uh, there you go. Um, from Golgotha is encoded in a place where the Ark of the Covenant is in a dense, um, I mean, it's mentioned in a sh small area, less than 5,000 as the width of this cylinder. From Golgotha, uh, I think that's pretty compelling. Ron Wyatt is here. Uh, so, in my opinion, it is very plausible that uh, his story could be true. Uh, you got Golgotha, the altar there. So it's Golgotha standing on the altar is revealed. Uh, there you go. So here you go, folks, from Golgotha. And uh, I'm going to wrap it up here. And folks, let me just say, uh, can you please just keep me in prayer here in the next few weeks as I'm, uh, I've been busy here lately. And uh, some of you have realized I haven't gotten back to you on your messages on Facebook and emails and things. Um, I'm getting ready for my custody case. So um, I've been offline here and there. So I will get to you, though. And also, um, orders for the lamps have already come in. Uh, we placed orders, and we are waiting for them to come in so we can get them out to you. Going to work on those to, to get out before Christmas. We got a great uh, response to that, over a dozen orders come in. So thank you, and may you sure bless you for that uh, in supporting this ministry. And again, folks, I would just ask you, please, just keep me in your prayers. Um, I got uh, a pretty tough road ahead of me. Um, with the get, getting my children back from a, uh, so it's a desperate situation for me but not from my God my Elohim he will um, he will provide what I need and he will get my kids back from me but just uh, you lifting me up and lifting that situation up will be a plus for me so Shalom and may Yeshua bless you and I'll see you in the next video